It is 18 hours and 7 minutes into the day of Wednesday, September 5th, 2012. And it's time for the first episode of Big Bang Theory at RL. And I've got to catch my breath. Yeah, life takes you to some really, really bizarre places. And right now, I'm going to church, starting a new section in my life where I'm learning Greek better now. So I've got to go to church more to uh, learn the Greek. Alrighty. I will see you in the next segment of Big Bang Theory RL. I'm ready. It's three hours and fifty-three minutes into the day of Thursday, September fifth. No, September sixth, two thousand twelve. Yeah. And we're doing our next segment of Big Bang Theory RL. E interesting thing. What had happened well, not really interesting, but yeah, you know, it's one of those things when it's like, you know, it's almost four o'clock in the morning. And the fatigue begins to set in and you're trying to think of what to say, how to say it, and make sure that it comes up half decent. I mean, if you look around on the uh, on YouTube uh, a lot of people, when they do the vlog, particularly when they do it off the top of their head, uh, if they're doing it without a script, it really comes off rough and they really don't know what to say because you can't... It's not as easy as it seems to roll something off the top of your head to have an, uh, a sort of called, called an off-the-cuff discussion. Off-the-cuff discussion. It is actually more complex than it seems because you've got to think of, of not only what to say but how to say it, as you're saying it, it, if you were writing, you'd go back, you'd have your notes, you'd do a rough draft, and you'd do several other drafts afterwards uh, until you get the paper looking exactly the way you want. When you're doing off the off the cuff, and you're doing real uh, uh, unedited arguments, as we're doing here in Big uh, Big Bang Theory RL, the whole purpose of Big Bang Theory RL is to be raw, is to be unedited to give you the beginning ideas as they are developed into more organized, more cohesive uh, documentaries that will be more polished. That's, the, that's where we're going towards. And this is sort of behind the scenes. This is the beginning outlook on things, the beginning, the beginning overview. And as I start to whittle things down, push things together, uh, you'll get a better idea of where things are going to go. So, yeah, I just got, uh, I, I was supposed to vlog, I was supposed to do, no, I would do this, this set because this is no longer vlog, it's the reality show, so we've got segments now. I was supposed to do the segment when I got back from church. I went to church uh, tonight, it's uh, St. Coles Mass today, uh, it, it is today because it's Thursday, because last, uh, <laughs> I went to church last night, but it wasn't last, it was a few hours ago. And when I got back, I went food shopping to TNT. And then after food shopping at TNT, uh, I came back and then began a, a bit of a stroll through you through YouTube. And then I got sidetracked by something. <laughs> And <laughs> it, it, it took me a couple hours to sort of uh, look at uh, something interesting that I was looking uh, Basically, uh, uh, I'm trying to sort of integrate more of the different programs that are on the KDE desktop into each, w within each other 
sort of sort of ha how to get everything more more organized, more working together across a variety of different platforms. And uh, as I went through and read some more stuff on uh, this is on called K Organizers, part of the KDE desktop system that includes uh, messaging, telephony. Uh, it gives you a whole communications tool that are on on the desktop, and you can go out and do a variety of things like, like connect to Google Calendars. You're supposed to be able to connect to Yahoo Calendars, but uh, there's a lot missing. That's that that, that, that sort of Yahoo's uh, stuff is rather incomplete. But because it's com compatible with the uh, uh, the uh, IC ICS format, this is sort of the Google Calendar format, then uh, you're able to sort of uh, adjust. To a variety, of, adjust a variety, and test them out. One works with the other, and so it takes me to this point now, where I finally get a chance to get away, and um, I've done all that, and, and uh, yeah, it's now it's at four o'clock in the morning, so that gives me, takes me to here, uh, and I'm using uh, the YouTube at this time. I'm, I'm on YouTube right now. I was on YouTube. Uh, looking around the, uh, the different channels, taking a look at the stroll around the uh, internet, or say a stroll around news, the YouTube uh, community that I, that I like, and looking at different videos. These gives me different ideas to talk about in here. In addition to uh, what I talk about, in, and that was the last one, uh, we've been talking about the mythology of uh, 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 called game mythology. So I'm going to correct myself on that. And I realized that a lot of times when I get into a discussion that uh, my thoughts aren't as fully developed in there as I possibly can. And that means I have to go back and look at things over, uh, look things over again and make sure that I've got the, uh, I can go back and sort of correct the ideas that I've, that I've made mistakes on. But this is sort of, uh, this is background, this is off the cuff, this is sort of, uh, the stuff hasn't been fully, uh, Developed, it's going to be further developed. But <laughs> the uh, you know the irony is that invariably you'll get hater comments, and what I term hater comments are these are negative comments that really don't have anything. They're, they're of no particular value. Criticism is good when it has some value. It actually, someone's actually giving you a good critique on things. But when it has absolutely no value or doesn't apply whatsoever. Uh, and this comment comes, and I'm not going to even bother commenting to see who it is because I went and checked his account. And you can always check, whoever comments, you can check their account. If they're a faceless account, uh, with no subscribers and no videos, it's basically a, uh, these are, uh, uh, lurking trolls who, uh, really have no, uh, commitment to the environment, so the YouTube environment whatsoever. And more often than not, they're the ones who leave a large chunk of these hater comments, and they're of no particular consequence. Uh, what this person did was basically take a uh, high school standard uh, marking sheet and try to apply what I was talking about to this uh, to this uh, standard standard uh, 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 high school marking sheet. But the thing is, is that. Uh, one, it doesn't apply because it's an open-ended discussion. There is no uh, complete or, or, or final thought to this. That's what an open discussion is. An open discussion it stays open. It never really concludes. And because this is an open discussion, if you try to apply your standard high school uh, bits to it, it's not going to fit or what you think or what you've learned from high school, or even and, and this is still true, Within the first and second year of university, first and second year of university, you're still pretty much following the high school format. It's not until you get into the really the third year where you start sort of peaking middle of the cover, and then you'll get the idea that you can go off book, off the standard uh, uh, views of society outside of the, go outside your lines and peek beneath what's happening and get a real sense uh, for the environment that you're in. But the, 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 the comment was posted here. He posted it with marks, and he gave me all you know bad marks on it and everything like that. But I don't really care. 
because <laughs> I was never, I'm not a Marx person. Who cares if A, B, C, D, or E, or F, E, or F? Mark, the Mark doesn't tell you anything. What is the, the person's reaction to what they're reading? That's the, what literature does. If it makes the person angry, that's not necessarily, that's not a bad thing. It, it, it gives, in many cases, if, if you're trying to put something out there, and you want someone to read and have an emotion to it, and it could be any emotion, it could be mad, it could be angry, it could be happy, it could be sad, it could be a variety of different emotions. So, one particular emotion is not better or worse than any other emotion. And in terms of the video views, uh, even when someone has left a, a negative comment, that means they've sort of taken the time to go through things a bit, and they've viewed your video, and uh, you've got the negative comment. But the negative comment, again, is irrelevant because you've got the view. They watched your stuff. Now, whether or not they'll come back again, that's another thing. But the fact that you have that one extra view, that's good. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And so they, well, uh, and there are a number of there are a number of YouTubers out there who complain and rant about the uh, uh, YouTube haters. But I don't really they, they don't bother me that much because in many cases that's some of the ways you can actually improve uh, the listings of your videos. Uh, so if you want to bring in more viewers, you put up some of this controversy, you know, controversial, and you start pushing it forward. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then you kind of leave it the way it is and you know go from there. But the thing is, I find in many cases that uh, even when you put out something that's controversial, if you're bringing in information that people really can't argue against, or have a difficult time doing that, they'll simply trash it or something, throw a, a, a useless negative comment. Like this comment, the comment here is, is useless and neg is negative, but it's also a useless comment. Because it doesn't, it doesn't attack any of the ideas uh, in the in the in the comments the, in the video itself, in the episode itself. There is no commentary on the episode uh, in terms of what the content was. And the thing is, is that he didn't say which thoughts were incomplete. I know there are are that I do have this problem of, of incomplete thoughts or to a certain degree incoherence, and that, that's par primarily because. Uh, I'll start out talking, talking about something, realize I need to add in some, uh, some qualifying information. By the time I finish the qualifying information, I forgot what the original point was. And uh, unless I have it written down, and you can't really do that uh, uh, if you're doing this on the fly, if you're doing this live, or you're doing this spontaneously, and this is supposed to be uncut and edited, and unedited, then you can't go back and say, hmm. You know, you can't do that. You can't go back and, and rewrite what you've done. There is no rewrite here because it, it's, it, it's raw and unedited. If it was uh, not raw and, and, and edited, then yeah, you can go back and fix things up. But because it's raw and unedited, you can't do that. It's, it's actually a violation of, if you're, if you're looking at somebody's journal in terms of the research, you see the mistakes, you see the errors, you see all the fumbles, the mistakes. That's how you learn. That's how you move forward. And if you don't do that, if you're not into that particular position, then yeah, things aren't going to go well, and things, you know, are, aren't going to produce the way you think they're going to produce. And I think there's a number of benefits to this as well. Like, one of the benefits that I've had uh, from this, uh, uh, from now, from, from, from my experience, I, said, I started off with a vlog, this is now for the last two weeks, it's been the full reality show. The goal was kept to get to this reality show, but I wasn't too sure how to put it together. And uh, for a while now, I've been sort of, uh, uh, before December, I've been sort of mulling around my mind what to do, how to do it. Uh, there was a lot of reviews on the internet that you couldn't do video production in Linux. So I said, let's see and let's try. And it was, it, 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 uh, I was watching, and this was after watching Nerds RL, uh, and that's, that's Cassandra. After watching her stuff, New Year's Eve, I was watching it again on New Year's Eve, and I said, let's just get up and do this. And <laughs> that's what they did, New Year's Eve. 
And you can see, the, you can see the the first video I produced was December 31st. That was my not the first the first episode of Big Bang Theory RL was December 31st. That was the first uh, video that I produced. And I, I would sort of think of well, what type of name do I give it to give to give uh, the show? And I looked at Nerds RL. I didn't want to take Nerds RL because you know, but I liked the RL part and. But I didn't know what to, put, what, to, what to sort of put to it. But I, and as I was thinking about it, I was thinking about how I explain to me people what I do for for my work. Because these people in my way, I say, well, what do you do all day long? And the only way I can explain it to the people is like, you know, the show Big Bang Theory. Well, that's basically my life. So as long as they know the show Big Bang Theory, I can give people an idea of what I do all day long. And. Because I do have some of the traits. Not only is it my field, astrophysics, but I do have some of the character traits, and that's what I was thinking about, about the character traits that I have in common with uh, Sheldon, Howard. Uh, it's more, more along the lines of, of uh, Sheldon, uh, Leonard, and uh, Raj. Uh, those are my three things. I do have the barrage. I do have that, that bit of shyness. There is, uh, I don't know, there was a bit of a reluctance, and even to a certain degree, I have a bit of stuttering that goes on. This is a bit of nervousness where uh, you get uh, sometimes flustered or things go up as you're speaking go out of your mind, uh, and you can't remember what has happened. Uh, in terms of where you are and what you're speaking about, and that causes the pause, it causes the stutter, or I'm trying to find a word and it's just not coming. Right? I'm not. I'm thinking, trying to think of what, the, uh, how to phrase something, and it gets stuck. So that's where things get. You know, that's sort of my raw side, side of the thing. But for uh, the Sheldon Cooper side of the things. I'm not, I don't have an eidetic memory. It's just that I've been in my library for so long, doing a lot of different reading, that uh, I've developed the ability to research in a whole variety of different areas. And this, this is sort of how I started off with the, uh, the, the with uh, my thesis was I was doing puzzles in my basement, and I realized that research was very much like doing puzzles. You had to find the pieces and start putting the pieces together. Well, in terms of a puzzle, it's pretty easy. All the pieces are in the box. You take the pieces out. You start sorting them. You work from the edges on in. Right? And if it's a larger puzzle, like a two, three thousand piece puzzle, you do the edges and you start group, sort, sorting and grouping uh, the pieces by color. Then, once you do all the easy areas, you get to the areas that are so similar that it's hard to tell them apart, and then you do start doing a search and sort by just simply, you know, Trying, trial and error, putting things together, you know, pulling them apart, pulling, putting together, pulling them apart, uh, and as you do this one by one, you can start fitting in different things. You can fill in the different uh, uh, areas that are sort of left over. When you're doing research, and this is my experience for exploration of the universe and from, from uh, the random walk, and this is how I realized that you could do the random walk and apply it to all the areas. What you can do and the way it works for the random walk is that the random walk becomes analogous to the um, puzzle, but the puzzle pieces are not in the box. They're scattered all over the world and all over the universe and throughout a variety of different subjects. And so your, your edges that you start with, the sort of the defined area you start with, are your libraries. And then from your libraries you grow on out from the libraries into larger and larger uh, uh, environments. Uh, and so it's basically you get an idea of what you want to do and you start, you know, randomly walking through the library, picking things up, and you start reading things and getting ideas on how to do different things, then you um, sort of, you add to what call your, your world map, your world view of things, and that sort of takes you out to other libraries, other experiences, and I said, the libraries are, 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 all libraries are, in terms of the definition here of a library, is simply a collection of things. So anything that is a collection, and this library could be small, it could be large, it could be any different size, uh, 
then you can uh, take this definition and apply it to a whole variety of different things and therefore the library isn't restricted to the academic institution library but it becomes very versatile, very open, very uh, amorphous in terms of the, you can now do a lot more with it than you did before. So that's sort of where things go for, for myself in terms of how I go, went from where it went from uh, where I was, you know, just sort of fiddling around with my puzzles into, into uh, quantum physics and into all these other different fields. And that gives me, that gave me the overview as I went through different fields and different studies uh, of all these different fields in the exact same way that Sheldon Cooper does it or anyone who has an eidetic memory. Or if you say eidetic, you know, basically these are the people who read something and they remember, read or hear it, hear it, see it, and they can remember it forever and ever just the way you uh, uh, have a photocopy or a computer who reads a book. They can work that thing can remember all the time. You can call it 100% of the time. But the thing is, my stuff isn't about recall in terms of memorizing what was exactly said. It's more about the exploration and the experience of exploration into these areas that has given me uh, the perspective, the science, the, the Sheldon Cooper perspective. Uh, and this sort of gives me the uh, Leonard Hofstadter, uh, Leonard, Leonard Hofstadter uh, sort of construction is that he's an experimental physicist. And, well, he stays in many cases it, uh, on limited to his experiments. There is, there is, he, he doesn't have, because his experiments limit him to his particular lab, he doesn't have the overview, the broadness of, of the research experience that uh, Sheldon Cooper does, but he's also more laid back. So, but that is, I'm more of a laid back person, not as uptight, I'm not as uptight as uh, Sheldon Cooper is, I'm more laid back. I compare myself in many cases to, uh, in terms of the professor type, I'm the weird professor uh, at the back of the library hidden in the stacks. Uh, there are other there are other professors who are neat, polished. These are the ones who have the you know the turtle next to tweed jackets with patches on the on the yellow. They're the quintessential professor. They they they, they look academic. Uh, that's not my type. I don't have that swab. I don't have that swagger. Uh, I am very definitely a geek. Uh, but you know that's that's fine with me. I, I have experiences that in terms of uh, of what I've seen that go far beyond what most academic experiences are. So I'm not upset that I haven't had the exact same academic experience that others may have had. Anyway, uh, I think that's going to be it for this segment here. As it, 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 this, let me go on to say this about the, uh, that, about the original topic that we're talking about and going back to it about uh, the negative comments sometimes and this particular uh, high school uh, evaluation. This isn't high school. This is open-ended research. This is open discussion. Uh, and I said, if you, you, I don't mind whoever wants to jump in, jump into the conversation. You know, no problem. You know, there's no, there are no stupid questions and no stupid answers. Give your opinion. Uh, that's the whole thing, is give your opinion. Don't just simply, you know, uh, give these tacit, you know, uh, uh, dismissals and remarks. And, you know, if you want to participate, participate. There's no problem with it, you know. Uh, I'm not going to make fun of you for not having an understanding. I mean, that's part of the whole part of here. It, part, part of why I'm here is that if you have questions or don't understand, even if you think you understand something and you want to put an argument, if you're wrong, don't worry about it, because you can always change how you view things. You know, the same thing here. You know, I, you know, my my views and ideas aren't uh, aren't etched in stone. They're very fluid and very uh, dynamic. They're supposed to be like that. A free thinker is supposed to be able to criticize himself and to uh, sort of ask your, uh, ask himself whether or not what he believes is actually to be true. And I think truth is does not have doesn't have anything to do with whether or not somebody else approves of it or not. 
this is the other thing. You know, most academic, most academic institutions require some degree of approval from somebody else. That subjective philosophy is, if you're in the, if you're going for objective philosophy, then the idea and the concepts have to stand on their own. The truth has to stand on its own. And the thing is, it may not be visible to everybody. Just because you experience and see something doesn't mean, necessarily mean that you're going to explain and show and prove this to somebody else. And I'll give an example of this. If you were looking at an infrared section, uh, 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 section of space, and you're, talk, and, you're, and you're saying, oh, this is so wonderful, looking at this infrared uh, sort of area. If you can't share this experience with somebody else through a photograph, then it doesn't matter what you say to somebody else. They're not going to believe you that this infrared area, which is invisible to the human eye, uh, actually exists. So, yeah, and I think that this actually has a lot of applications, of it, and there are a lot of analogies to it, and a lot of examples in the world where people who haven't seen certain things, haven't had certain experiences, don't understand what the mechanism is, in it, what the mechanism mechanism is in physics. And it doesn't matter how you explain it to them, if they don't understand the fundamental physics, they're not going to understand what you what you, what you've seen and what the what's been experienced. It's going to be a mystery to them. So you know that's where that goes. And this is sort of what, what I'm talking about. Game of game mythology right now is a, is a terminology because the the concept of homosexuality, the concept of being gay. Uh, hasn't been proven. It's still simply a concept. It's an idea. It's abstract. It's without form. So, that's where that ends. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, I have to go and do the editing now. I'm a little behind on my editing work, so I'm going to go do some editing now. Alright, see you in a little bit for the next segment. Yeah, we're in the editing room, yay! <laughs> and it's uh, basically 7.15 in the morning. And uh, we're still at the editing bay here. Uh, waiting for the, uh, the last episode, the, uh, the September 4th and 5th episode of uh, Big Bang Theory RL. Uh, to upload, to not upload, to render. It's still got another hour left, so... Yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a not really a bit of a stretch. It's gonna be the way it usually uh, the way it usually is. So let's say an hour from now, eight fifteen, another hour or so to upload. So eight thirty. I'd say aiming the ending the, the day is gonna end around nine o'clock in the morning. So that will be the end of my day. That's kind of the way things go. It's, uh, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting more used to the uh, uh, the, the work schedule, and I end up having uh, uh, am able to do more during that day, during my day period, uh, that uh, than I was the week before. So the routine is setting in. The uh, my capacity to do more each day is growing. Uh, so I'm um, actually getting a lot done on the schedule. Now the question is, I got to start pushing in more and more and more. You know, I'm still not where I need to be just exactly yet. So, but I'm getting there. I'm getting as, as long as I've got some progress. You know, and I'm moving in the right direction. That's good. Uh, you know, if I wasn't moving in the right direction, that wouldn't be good. But I am moving in the right direction, even though the progress is not as monumental as you know it could be. Or I would like it to be. Anyways, um, that's about it. As I said, I'm, I'm going to be uh, re uh, retooling uh, the Y section of uh, Big Bang Theory RL, the Y axis, so that Big Bang Theory RL uh, can become more interactive. That the way you will interact with me, have open discussions or or anything like that will be through. Um, uh, comments why we'll have a lot you can you know post vid you can post uh, co video comments to me and stuff like that you know just uh, you know that's where uh, 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 the, the the separate comments if, it, if it's more of an in the discussion type of thing that's all going to be isolated down there you know it's going to also be in the show but it's going to be sort you know you'll see how it works 
and we'll sort of work through things as it, as, as uh, we move along. Anyway, I think that's about it for now. So yeah, I got another hour left uh, for rendering, and then an hour for upload. So you know, I'll maybe come back around 8:30, 9 o'clock, and let you know where we are at uh, for things. So, all right, take it easy. Yeah, it's uh, 11:15 in the morning. This is the last segment of this episode of Big Bang Theory. And surprisingly, uh, well, things. This ep the last episode I uploaded, uh, like, just pushed out. That was the September 4th and 5th, uh, episode. Uh, I made a mistake in, uh, two areas. Uh, I used the, one gra the wrong graphic in one area and they didn't have uh, the Physics TV logo down at the bottom. So they at the bottom here. Yeah, they didn't have that logo down at the bottom. I think yeah, to, to the left here. And oh, I forgot to resize uh, one of the segments. Uh, the camera that you that I'm using is a refurbished uh, uh, standard definition camera. Then I use uh, uh, a Caden Live feature to bump it up to 720p, so that's how I get to 720p. So it's a good feature, but if you don't do it exactly right and that happened, I missed the one, that one segment there apparently. I thought I got everything, but I guess I missed that one segment. And the result was that, uh, there was, uh, the windows, the, the, the size of the graphics and where the video was, was kind of out of place, so that's but that 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 happens. That these things occur, and uh, you know, the goal is simply to try to get better. So uh, I think I've got a system that will help me do that. Uh, that's going to help me move forward. I am. It does seem like I'm putting in close to uh, uh, 19. Uh, yeah, just about. So I'm, I'm averaging now. I was averaging 12 hour days, now it looks like I'm averaging uh, 15, 16 hour days. And that's, that's a little rough, but once again I'm slowly getting used to it. I was able to do, uh, well, I was w waiting for some of the stuff to upload, I did some work on uh, the re main research desk here. This is also the Linux Music Studio and I got the piano working again. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember, I had a problem with Pulse Audio, the sound, dealing with issues with the sound card. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, it seems that I've worked out some of the bugs and got things working again. I've done some of my first practices. And everything's working out, you know, it's working out fine with the piano. Now it's a matter of beginning my practice work and getting my, my lessons out, my lessons done and moving forward with uh, music production on Linux. So that's something you can look forward to in the next coming weeks or so. Anyway, as you can see, I'm getting tired. It's the end of a long, long day. So I will see you in the next, well, yeah, the next segment of Big Bang Theory, which will be the first segment of the next episode. All right. Take it easy. Night. Professor of what? Professor of physics. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.